Okay. Man, so I finally finished the book. So this is Welcome to Utopia, an Island Fever Augmented Reality Experience. And one of the things that I really appreciated about this book is that, you know, you can't get any more stemmed out than me. And so looking at something like this, I am a medical student, I'm a PhD student, I'm a neuroscientist, I'm an animator, I'm a football player or an athlete, former athlete, and I'm an artist. And with it, all the things that I do are the embodiment of, you know, STEM or STEAM, however you want to say it. And so with this book, I really wanted to create something that allows people to really explore the relationships that they have with books and change the way that they look at books. Because it's not that people aren't reading, because they're reading on Twitter, they're reading memes, they're reading on social media, they're reading text messages and all that stuff. It's just that they're not reading long form things. And a lot of the reason why is because they're not reading books. And so short form stuff is really having a negative impact. And I could tell from my experience where if you're not reading long form and you're not improving your comprehension by reading long form stuff, then you are not able to get into medical school or places like medical school or law school. And I know that because as a medical student, one of the things that really helped me in my process of getting into medical school was improving my MCAT. And to this day, I will never forget this. I will never forget this because from taking the MCAT the first time to taking the MCAT the second time, I really wanted to get my biology score up because I felt that uh, reading comprehension wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to improve my reading comprehension because I wasn't an English major. But if I just get my biology score up, then I'll be able to get my uh, MCAT score up above a 500 and I'll be able to get into medical school. Uh, anybody that tells you differently, anything over a 500 is just a bonus. That's all you need to get into medical school. And many people get into medical school with just a 500 or 501 or 502, right? So these 520s don't listen to people about how you need to get that. Make yourself more well-rounded, right? But aside from the point, um, I spent three months, kid you not, three months trying to improve my biology score. And when I took the MCAT, not only did my biology score go down, but it went down by like two points. And so it ended up being the worst score that I had, even after spending three months specifically trying to improve my biology score. I was always good at chem chemistry and physics. And so that was always a top score. But my reading score ended up being my top score for my MCAT. So I ended up getting a 129 from a 122 or 121 to a 129 uh, on my CARS MCAT score. And that was crazy to me. But then when I think about it, what did I do to actually get better at my CARS score? I read my biology books every single day for hours. And so it didn't help me when it came to doing better on biology, but it did help me with my reading comprehension because I was reading a lot. And so it really goes back to my introduction to just sort of books and how I got better as a reader or, you know, the first book that I ever finished um, in high school was in 10th grade. My teacher, Mr. Diaz, he had this thing where we had to do a book report every month or whatever based off of a book that we read outside of class. And we had to bring that book into class and we had to do a book report off of it. I, to that day, I never, for high school or middle school or anything, I was never reading because I was just an athlete and that's, that, was my, that was my story. And so he ended up uh, introducing me to graphic novels, which were just larger comic books or a collection of comic book issues into one book to tell a complete story. And so by virtue of that, I grew an appreciation for reading through comic books and it really allowed me to have a collection. And so I was going to Borders Books looking for the latest graphic novels and getting introduced to different forms of storytelling and characters and all that stuff. And it was all because I didn't want to read books. I wanted to read graphic novels so that I could do these book report things. And I had to do that for my classes. And so... You know, understanding the impact of graphic novels, I wanted to find ways to uh, improve or make books more appealing so that, you know, if they finish a book like this, that is hardcover, 150 pages, they will, in many ways, like, they're more likely to 
finish another book or open up another book because uh, I remember when I finished my first book, it's the, I remember that to this day. I remember the feeling of being accomplished that I actually went cover to cover on a book uh, that, you know, and wanted to do and do that again and, and chase that feeling again. And so, you know, for this, quite literally, every page that you see here that says AR, that that is an augmented page. And so people quite literally have been looking at the cover and staring at the cover because it's an augmented cover for five minutes, just exploring it and being entertained. And I was just like, hey, wait till you wait till you open up the book and see it. Right. And so I, I in my mind, I was just like, what if I created a book that was over 150 pages and each one of those pages had an augmented experience in it? something that allows you to shine your phone over it and, you know, use your iPad and really explore the book for it for in and of itself and have a deeper relationship with the book by virtue of augmented reality. And so I, I created an experience where you can do that. And I put something akin to an explosion on every single page, over 100 pages, 150 pages worth of augmentations or something akin to an explosion. To the point where I'm just like, hey, people will at least want to see what's on every single page, what experience pops out on every single page. And if they do and they get through 100 pages or whatever, then my job is done. I created a book that compels people to to explore for hours to the point where there's so much content in it three hours worth of content that your phone battery is probably going to run out before you actually finish the book. And so I started to really put these ideas together and, and create this book that quite literally 150 pages, the cover is augmented over a hundred augmentations, every single page. And not only that, but the total runtime for the book is about three hours. And so in one unity scene, I am dynamically loading gigabytes worth of content for you to just explore in the book. And then, because everybody always, every time they see the book and they see the experience in real life, one of the things that has been very clear to me with all the times that I've showed it at markets is that they tell me ideas of what's possible. And so for me, I'm in medical school, right? So I... Yeah, you tell me and you tell me what is possible with this, what you could do with AR and in books and why there isn't anything like this or a lot of stuff like this. Now I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. But I'm in medical school. I can't work on your ideas. I don't have time, right? Because I got my other stuff that I worry about, right? But I know that people have interest once they see the book and they see how uh, the applications of it and the possibilities. Then for me, it becomes a matter of... Uh, giving them direction and so quite literally you go to 100 page 142 and you have all the ideas that you have running through your brain and quite literally i walk you through the process and so you get to page 143 and quite literally you realize that this is an educational resource it is a it is a form of entertainment that spans hours and hundreds of pages but it's also an education resource where you learn design thinking, you learn character design, you learn how to make comics, you learn how to make AR stuff. And the projects that I have are actually the projects that I give out to people and I sell. And it gets to the point where I figured if I'm able to make something that compels people to look through over a hundred pages and engage in over two, three hours worth of experiences, I'm pretty sure some of them may have ideas that they want to explore by virtue of me introducing my applications. And if there is a, if there is interest, then I can show them how I did it so that it can empower them to do it for themselves. And so for better or for worse, this is my answer to the flaws of STEM education where in order for me to be successful with this, I want to get as many of these in people's hands as possible. And if I can do that, 
then they can be entertained. They could explore the educational experiences that come with this, and they can empower themselves by virtue of the work that I've created for them to go on and create more stuff and, and you know, give back to the community, but also inspire the community, just like my work inspired them. And being able to create something like this was so powerful and so important for me, mainly because, one, as a business owner, it's really hard for me, because I'm in medical school, it's really hard for me to finish projects and take on projects that people reach out to me for because I, I'm just a one-man show. And so I just don't have the capacity to study for my medical license exams, you know, work in the hospital, and also work on everybody's projects, right? But I've created a system for myself and I'm able to teach that in a way that is culturally relevant for people. And then I, I'm always using the projects that I work on that people are willing to pay for to uh, show the value of it. And so in my mind, it's like, if I, could, if I create something that is cool enough for people to spend their hard-earned money on, and they're willing to spend hours with it and show their friends, then they're more likely to take a class based on how I made this stuff. And they're probably going to have ideas that they are inspired by to pursue. And I'm willing to guide them down that road because I want to have a larger community of immersive storytellers and creators that utilize technology, not despite the advances, but, you know, as a benefit of those advancements, because for better or for worse, most of everything is made on free software. Like Unity is free. Unreal is free. Blender is free. All that, right? And so it's a matter of you having a computer, which most people do at this point because of COVID, and being able to explore your ideas in a way that is culturally relevant, but also, also, and I say also, but also relevant to the market and where people are at right now, right? And so that, that's been a big thing for me, being able to create stuff that is at the intersections of like art, technology, and culture, and being able to be authentic with myself and how I see, how I want things to be for me and for other people in the industry. And, you know, that, that's just sort of what I did, right? And so Island Fever Augmented Reality, it is available for sale. You know, this, is, this has been a long time coming, mainly because when I first got into the AR space in 2020, it was to be able to create augmented reality comic books and books that you quite literally don't need to know how to read to enjoy. Because if finishing books is supposed to predict how well you could do in your life and in your education and all that, and reading is the prerequisite, then you technically need to just know how to read to get books and then enjoy that but books for better or for worse are a medium that we are quite literally used to for storing information and so in my mind i was just like what if i was able to create an experience with a book that allows for you to touch it you know hear it play with it and read it and just view it right and so incorporating your ears and so sound, incorporating your eyes and so motion, animation, illustration, incorporating touch with it being a tactile experience and just being able to make something immersive. People are reading their tweets. People are watching their favorite anime with subtitles. And so they're reading, but they're not reading with books. And that's translating to lowering literacy rates and people not getting into medical school, you know, because the MCAT is a reading test. And so I figure if I could incorporate game elements and incorporate the subtitled anime experience and literally put that in the book, instead of people putting their phones down or their tech devices down to pick up a book, why don't you have a book in your hand, prop your phone up or use a headset and then explore books in a new way. And so you don't need to put your phone down to enjoy a book. You can use your phone to enhance the book experience. And that was the goal that I had from the beginning. And that is something that I was successfully able to do with this book here. And so I hope that everybody uh, has the opportunity to uh, explore affordable, immersive storytelling like the book that I have here with Island Fever Augmented Reality, because this is the future. This is the, this is the present, but it's also the future. You know, if you had a book that you know, allowed you to play around with 3D models in the context of what you're learning, 
or you have an explosion in your favorite comic book or you're able to bring stuff to life so that it gives you that anime subtitle experience uh, and you get to read and you get to have a collection of books and share them with people and have these read-along experiences like we had growing up, uh, why not? And if the only thing that's stopping you is just having an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device and a book that's powered by that and an app, then those things are possible. And so for me, this is a, a dream come true to be a neuroscientist that looks at immersive storytelling and looks at sensory inputs and incorporating those into experiences so that they create deeper connections with people and be able to create create lasting experiences that uh, resonate with people and empower people to think beyond what is possible. And so, again, if you want to check out Island Fever Augmented Reality, check it out at shop.iltopia.com. This is my pride and joy here. Uh, three hours worth of original animation introducing you to the characters in the world of Island Fever uh, by virtue of augmented reality and over 100 original animated experiences, uh, tons of live action stuff, uh, a lot of great references, and a lot of the behind the scenes of the journey that I had created to create this book and what I went on and how I'm able to navigate that with going to medical school, being a P neuroscience PhD student, being an animator, being a technologist, and uh, also being a black student, right? And so uh, as the first black MD PhD student in the history of the state of Nevada, um, you know, many of the experiences that I have navigating this space, I incorporate into the work that I do because for better or for worse, it's really it's a really stressful journey for me. And one of the things that I've grown to appreciate with the journey that I have in medicine and in research is that I need to, I can't study 24 hours a day, right? And so being able to study 10 hours a day and look forward to escaping through my creative endeavors, uh, not as a full-time job, but as a you know, means of therapy of coping with the stresses of my day-to-day -day life. I'm able to do that two to three hours a day and be able to create something like this over the course of two to three years. And to have this healthy outlet and be able to share a lot of the, um, the traumas and the experiences that I have and uh, express myself uh, through this medium and create something that people can support me with it, it's a it's by far a blessing and I, I truly think that I, I hit a sweet spot in a way that uh that I don't think many people get the opportunity to do. And so for everybody that has been following me, I really appreciate it and I hope that you buy the book and support me on this journey. Uh, and I hope to be able to uh, create more stuff uh, in this in this format, you know, with the multicam setup and all that stuff. Uh, now that I'm past my first board exam and I'm moving on to a more sustainable uh, next couple of years for me creatively and, and mentally. And this allows me to really expand on the things that I've always wanted to do in the field of medicine, but also in the tech and the art space um, and in the education space. And so, you know, I look for more and more people to uh, really yeah, I just hope more and more people just sort of stay tuned and tapped in. And I hope that I'm able to, in many ways, uh, you know, inspire you to just think beyond what is possible. You know, I used to have this, when I was playing football, I had this model called Dare to be Different. And then throughout the life cycle of Utopia, I created another model called Create and Conquer. And I haven't figured out what the next model is going to be uh, for the most part, but um, for at least this phase for me, but I, I really truly believe that this is an opportunity for us to just think beyond what is possible. And if I'm able to, you know, make it from football to animation and all that stuff to really see uh, this through, then hopefully it inspires you to do the same as well. And so, like always, um, you know, subscribe, check me out on all the social nets at Iltopia, at Stuck on an Island, 
and you know i hope you know i hope to be able to create more stuff and share with more with you guys so without that i will catch y'all later